tomorrow afternoon at the Tavern on the Green here in New York City, um, a great actress, Peggy Wood, will be honored. She will receive the Fabergé Straw Hat Special Achievement Award, and it will be presented by another great actress and great friend of hers, Miss Betty Davis. And that gave us a chance to have both of these two great ladies on our show. It's been both of these great ladies. Both of these two is redundant. It's been said that uh, Betty Davis was the first actress to make movie acting respectable, and <laughs> she has a couple of Oscars to prove that. And history may just prove her the finest film actress ever. Peggy Wood, her good friend, first starred on Broadway in May time in 1917. And uh, that's quite a while back. Probably everyone, or nearly everyone, according to the box office receipts, has seen her as the nun admonishing us to climb every mountain in the film Sound of Music. She was the star of Mama on television, has an amazing list of theatrical credits. And it is always nice to see great actresses make their entrances. And um, tonight you get to see two of them at the same time, Miss Betty Davis and Miss Peggy Wood. <laughs> You've talked a lot about the Emmy, but I read a war hoop of joy. You did a lot of war hoops? Last night, all alone of the plaza. I it bet was, they could uh, hear it across town. No, it wasn't that loud. It was kind of late as you know. Oh, the see. show did go on a while, as you said. That's true. It did yeah. go on a while. <laughs> How nice to meet you. How nice to meet you, sir. Yes. In the flesh. Why have they kept us apart so long? We just, we just, actually, we just met a moment ago well, backstage. But the sure nice to see you. The only time I saw you, really, was in this theater when... And Noel Coward was here last year, and uh, Ben Luntz. That's right. And uh, I was out there. And I didn't so you get see, to there you. was this great barrier between us yes. from there to here. I guess it's safe to say that you two have known each other for before <laughs> tonight. Well, yes, yeah. we, we met, you know, when uh, Miss Wood was a superstar, as we call them today, at the Cape Playhouse. Yeah. And I was trotting up and down the aisle, seating the theater goers. And that is when I first met Miss Wood, and she was, you know, perfectly marvelous to all such apprentices as we were then. You, you were learning your trade and... Well, uh, I wasn't really learning it because I, I wasn't allowed to do anything much that summer but usher. Yeah. But I was learning how to be an usher. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a certain amount of doing, you Can know, you with the flashlight and where are the seats, you know. <laughs> Can you still do that if you were well, pressed I haven't into it? If you were... I don't think I'd want to. No. No. I see. <laughs> But I knew that she was an apprentice there because my late husband, uh, John B.A. Weaver, uh, went to a performance of The Apprentices and um, came back to me pop-eyed. He said, I have seen a actress, boys and girls, and I think she is absolutely marvelous. And he said, I'm going into New York tomorrow and I'm going straight to George Abbott's office and I'm going to tell him he has to see this girl by the name of Betty Davis. And uh, he did so, did he not? Did you get in there? Uh, uh, I, I, I never have met Mr. Abbott, but I appreciate what Mr. <laughs> Weaver did. No, I never have met him in all these years. Even oh. yet? No. But you know, I, I went to Hollywood. I wasn't in the theater more than about three or four years. Mm -hmm. yes. So I just well, didn't do, happen to meet him. Does he have all that time to get around to you? I don't it's right in between. Well, maybe I should have stayed, you know, see, in the theater longer, but it worked out that I went to California. So. Say, could I ask you both a question? I don't know. Do I have Roquefort cheese on my face? <laughs> hmm? Do you know no. that feeling? I did a live commercial a moment ago. Do you know that feeling that I people are no. staring at something that you have? No, no. you look beautiful. All oh, right, I, I just, I don't ask all my guests if no. I have Roquefort cheese dressed <laughs> in my face. I thought I would just do ask you, you. Do, do you ask the same thing when you get a pie in the face? You know, I've never had that. Neither have you? Have I. What's it like? I, oh, I have. Have you? Oh, in the army shows, there is an old, old vaudeville sketch, which I'm sure you remember, called The Stand-In. Yeah. And uh -huh. it's, it's a famous vaudeville sketch. And, and the, the star of the show gets all ready, you see, and they get the pies ready, and then they put the stand-in to take it. 
Right. And I played the stand-in in all these army camps in Northern California. I used to take about five pies a day sometimes at five shows. It is the most miserable feeling. <laughs> because it goes all up your nose and the smell, the sm you smell oh. of this pie forever, as far as I was concerned. Where did they find people but the, with Oh, the, the guys, they loved it, though. They thought it was such fun. Yeah. It really was such fun to do uh, for, for all the servicemen, you know? And it was particularly funny because I was doing it. But uh, I do know about taking pies. Is there a, a secret to it? Blueberry pie must be something. Uh, yes, I, that blueberry. Chocolate's the worst because chocolate. <laughs> you know, chocolate smells strongest. You know. Yes. And it gets in your hair, everything. Uh, so you go yeah. take shower, shampoos. You're just ready for the next show, and you get another pie. <laughs> Were you ever hit by a pie that was not planned? No. I mean, had you ever? Did anybody ever have a surprise? Pull a no, surprise no, on you because no, that. No. Would, I think that would really test your sense of humor if somebody. Um, yes, I think that would be pretty disastrous. Yes. 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 Well, some people may not think it's funny, but we have a little surprise for you, Betty. <laughs> Don't you dare! No. <laughs> wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that test a friendship? The surprise would be that it would come into my face. No, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do a thing like that. No, he would only you do don't it to me. That's there, there, well, familiarity you, you are breeds suspicious. contempt. This is the third time I've been on your show, and you don't respect me anymore. Now you're going to throw pies at me. <laughs> it's just not true. That's it's what not. happens. Miss Wood is suspe suspicious that we actually have one concealed here. No, there will be no pies that we know of tonight. Oh, there will be no pies. Miss Wood, when, when uh, was there a moment in your life where you can look back and say that that, that was the moment you decided to be an actress, no matter what? Let nothing stand in your way. Well, dear, I'd like to say that I was um, going to be a singer all my life. From the very beginning, mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily going to be an actress. And my father said to me, I saw to it that you had your singing lessons and everything, but where the hell did you learn to act? So I said, I thought, you know, that everybody could do, anybody could do it. And, but uh, certainly in those marvelous singing roles, you, yeah. you, you were an actress, too. Oh, yes, I was <laughs> what they called a singing actress. <laughs> and, uh, and that meant that I could at least uh, make some semblance of, a, um, have a resemblance of a person on the stage and not just a doll that you wind up. That's mm -hmm. right. But um, the, all, all the um, parts that I did of the, in the musical world were all acting parts, too. Yeah. Where, you know, when you're really want to be something in the theater, you get a play that has you play four different ages. Then you're in. Anybody that plays, and I can look back over all of, of my colleagues and see that mm. their big successes always came. Well, we have one now, Sadie Thompson, that right. have played right. four different parts. Then you're in. So that was me in Maytime. That's right, of course. So I had to play a young girl, and then a married woman, and then an old lady, and then another young girl, a granddaughter of the original young girl. When I had a success in um, London, in Bittersweet, there I played four different right. ages, and right. you're surefire, <laughs> you're made if you can play That's four right. different ages. I would guess, too, that the hardest one to play would be the one closest to your own, because for the really, if you're young playing an old lady, you can make yourself up, but yes. but to play I didn't have you to make me up, you're... though. You did very nicely, but this other one getting older. <laughs> did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it is Would true. that be true, that the one, if, that for a 20-year-old person to play 30 would be harder than for a 20-year-old person more difficult, to play Much 60. more difficult. Yes, than, yes, yeah. yes. Mm. Yeah. Then, then, then um, an old, old lady. That's right. and, and then you can also add to the old, old lady by tottering. Mm -hmm. They love to see you totter. <laughs> <laughs> Let us take, uh, we may find a lot of secrets out about acting tonight. Let us take a message. We'll be right back. Almost coaxed you into singing that. We, we have almost no time right here now because we have station break coming up. But I wanted to remind you that tomorrow night, a lot of people have uh, said, Tell us again what night it is. Uh, Jack Parr will be here for uh, the whole show. So uh, it'll be great to see Jack back in this time slot, won't it? It will indeed. You did your first talk show with him. Absolutely. And, and for actors, the talk shows were very difficult in the beginning because it yeah. had nothing to do with acting. And 
I was panicked. And he was really perfectly marvelous to me and sort of, you know, got me used to just exposing myself, you know, which is hard for actors to do. They'd rather be hidden in yeah. something else. Yeah. Last time you talk about your virginity, now you talk about exposing yourself. <laughs> Betty. <laughs> We will Unfortunately, discuss. we did. Yes, we did. There's been, let's talk about the, some of the comment on that when we get back. All right. We're back. <laughs> it's funny, the band was playing Zagoyner, the Noel Coward uh, yes. song, and, and you, you sang that in, in Bittersweet? In Bittersweet, when you were, yes, geez. in London. Yeah. Yes. It's interesting. Can I tell you, she had the most beautiful voice. Yeah. I'll never forget your voice. It was exquisite, truthfully. Oh, truthfully was, you know it was, honest. In no, your heart. Well, I'll tell you what because it you was loved like. singing. You loved singing. Not necessarily, no. It was always a chore. But as I said long ago, uh, I was not Miss Mouse exactly. I thought I could go around and see what I could do. So when I was just out of the chorus, I managed through Arthur Hammerstein to get an audition with the old man Oscar Hammerstein of the opera. The old Oscar Hammerstein. Yes, the one with the plug hat. <laughs> and uh, so I went to sing for him. And he listened politely for a little while, and then he said, yes, a very pretty voice. Out. Oh. So I, knew, I always know what is there. A very pretty voice is what it was. Uh, but it was not, oh, it was not so beautiful as this, this, all that. He didn't think so. He anyway. did. Well, I did. <laughs> I did. Well, right. I should have applied to you for the job. <laughs> <laughs> you would have gotten it. You would have gotten it. Bless you, you two really are friends. Uh, it, it, some people tell us that it's impossible for actresses to get along. Well, through the years, not. How, we've, yeah. This is so I, long since we've I seen know. each other. Is it? You know. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Just so many, we many, 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 many years since we've seen each other. It is. And um, she's in Maine, and I would be in California. Or I would be in London and she would yes. be in California. We move around. But because of uh, my really meeting Miss Wood at the Cape Playhouse, mm -hmm. uh, I, I asked for the privilege of giving her the award tomorrow because I thought it was a kind of a link yeah. between us, you know, the Playhouse. And the, the Henry Fonda, uh, I was the first year for the achievement. Henry Fonda was the second. Uh, Miss Wood is now the third year, the achievement award. And we were all at the Playhouse yes. at exactly the same time, the yes. same year. Hank was beginning his career, but he, he had parts to play, and I was ushering. Yes. And of course, she was our star, you know. But it was a strange thing that the three of us were all at that beautiful Cape Playhouse. It was the first one, you know. The interesting the first to see the great old, one that ever was. Yes, the yes. old program with your names in small type and Henry Fonda and Betty Davis. Oh, I have a lot of programs like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't keep those. For me. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Miss Wood, what do you think of this modern phenomenon of these actresses coming on television and telling their most intimate details of their lives? And, and, uh, Should I leave now? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, the, these days things are discussed publicly that never were years well, ago. Yeah. Oh, you mean the actresses are doing it or they're playing parts that do it? No, they're both. They do both. They come on shows like this and tell anything. That's right. I had Barely. one do it once. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a young woman. I, I don't. I sometimes discuss my virginity, but that's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. no, they, they, there, there are no holes barred anymore. They're the most unbelievable intimate experiences they discuss. Yeah. I, well, am I not lucky? I haven't seen them. Maybe something told me not to be caught up in that. Because yeah. one of these days, you would ask me what I thought of it. <laughs> that would be the trouble. And you don't have that reputation. No, I guess you know that, but what happened with Miss Davis. I don't know who surprised whom the most that night. Because we'd been discussing how, in an interview, we trust each other because we know each other. And I said, you know, I wouldn't ask you anything that you no, wouldn't want No, you were kidding. Answer. The old interviewer, like... Yeah. You know, who used to ask all these questions. What's your and so then color? so yes, and so then you, as a joke, asked me this question as an old one of those interviewers, columnists would ask. Mm -hmm. And I thought a minute and I said, Well, you know, I'm going to answer you. And his face. <laughs> but then you know. I felt that you see, I felt it was not in bad taste actually, because um 
it had, had to do with my being married, you know. Right. I think if I told you when I lost my virginity to some unknown fella somewhere. Yes. But I, I'm rather original today, you know. <laughs> it's a phenomenon today, yes. you know, that you marry as a virgin, and I did. So I felt it wasn't in bad taste. Not at all. But it was kind of fun besides. It didn't, it didn't bring back the fad, but it did. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> and it never will bring back the fad. <laughs> And a good thing it is. I a suppose. good thing it is. That's right. Oh, you yes. also said that. Oh, there, yes. It's absurd. There was, there was more talk about that, I guess. And we, we both looked startled. Well, you didn't look startled at all. I did. <laughs> Miss Wood, you, you got an award from the King of Norway, which I find intriguing. Yes. Uh, and it's occasionally it's given... It's not an award, my dear. Oh, no. I'm sorry. It's a decoration. A decoration? Decoration, yes. When um, the Norwegian government and the king decided to give this thing to me, um, Another network on which I was. I don't suppose that they mentioned it. Um, um, Are they still in business? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they decided that uh, since nothing like that had ever happened to any of their actors, they would give a big luncheon. And uh, the um, Norwegian uh, consul, uh, head consul, would give this thing to me uh, as uh, in lieu of, of the king, who just didn't go running around a, 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 giving awards to anybody. Mm -hmm. So we had the thing in a big to-do, and it very nearly didn't come off because it was given at the Waldorf Astoria, and the <laughs> Norwegian consul uh, wouldn't go on with it because <laughs> the Waldorf had decorated the entire room with Swedish flags. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Once they got those torn down and the Norwegian <laughs> flags put up, then we went through the little ceremony, and the uh, thing was pinned on me. And um, then we sat down to lunch. And a young man, uh, obviously in the uh, advertising world, the Madison Avenue world, sat down next to me, and he said, uh, now, when are you going to have your audition? The word for being presented to a royalty is audience. Oh, yes. no. And he said, when are you going to have your audition? Oh, <laughs> Was he no. the same man who put up the flags, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> Could be, yes. But they finally got it all straightened out. Yes, finally got it all straightened out. Then I went to, to Norway because uh, you, as I say, the king doesn't come out of the country. <laughs> you go to him, and then you find out when he will be seeing you and you find out through your embassy, and I said, I didn't know what. It's like doing a talk show, my dear, because I didn't have any script, I didn't have any idea what I was to do or say. I didn't know whether I was going to stand in line and curtsy or what. So I went in, and uh, I asked the equerry what I was to do. He said, you'll find it's all right, it's all right. I didn't know the words, I didn't know the script, I didn't know anything. Do you speak Norwegian? Well, I speak a few words, but um, I went in and the king, oh, he said only one thing, you must wear a dark dress and don't turn your back on the king. <laughs> well, that's two things I knew anyway. So I went in and he had met me at a desk in the middle of this big room, a roll top desk. And, um, uh, I went in, and he had met me halfway to the door. Then he sat down, and I discovered that he was going to speak English beautifully, as he did. And uh, I had a perfectly delightful time. It was like a cafe clutch, really. <laughs> and he, had, he said, were you at my birthday party? Well, the birthday party was the whole of Norway the day before, and a parade. And I want you to know that that man had walked down the center of the big street, with no guard at all. Yeah. And uh, from crossing to crossing, his arms were filled with flowers as the children came up to give them to him. And when the thing was over, I really would like to tell this to the whole of the United States, there wasn't a piece of a lily cup or any yeah debris in the place at all. It was absolutely clean. Yeah. How did they manage that? They're clean people. Oh. 
has something to do with it. Yes. Was he personable, though? Did he seem like, could you oh, ever get out, out of your head that you were talking he, with he the king? He was one of the great, great people. Oh, he was a marvelous <laughs> person. <laughs> and, and what was the thing? There was a, well, a little, a little nursery rhyme that fitted with something. And he knew it, and he slapped his leg along with it. It was Pussycat, Pussycat, where have you been? Yeah. I've been to London to see the Queen, yeah. but I've been to Oslo to see the King, yeah. you see. And he was, I didn't know that, how I was going to get out of it, because he wanted to keep on talking. And I knew that I couldn't stay all the time. But he talked to me not so much about the Mama show that I did, which... This uh, medal is given to people who do um, make a sort of rapport between people outside of Norway and Norway too. And uh, there have been um, um, actresses from Holland or there, that is not there at always. It's a sea captain sometimes. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when it was time to go, he, one nice thing, he said, what have you done? And, in our country. I said, I was just on the, on the air, did an interview. He said, well, they pay you. I told him, he said, well, you see, they won't pay me anything. <laughs> so he said, I talked to the Chamberlain, and he said, that was my job. <laughs> How about that? That's smart. So then I remembered when he got up that I was not to go to the door by turning my back on him. So he walked along with me a little bit as I turned to make my bow, he had gone back to his desk. So he had uh, saved me from making a faux pas. That's it right. was, that was quite an experience. See, that is interesting. <laughs> I wish more kings had his manners. I wish more kings. Well, the ones I've it. met have been perfect slobs. <laughs> <laughs> How strange to meet you a king. Met a king? Really, no, I never have no, met him. But I can't imagine, if he went on like that, how you would end the conversation. I mean, you can't. You'd be tempted to say things like, you're not the only king I'm seeing today, or something. <laughs> but, uh, gee, that's, a, that's a really wonderful story. Um, we'll be right back after this message of interest. Stay with us. Let me ask you, both of you ladies, this. Uh, there are two cliches that always go around about people who go into the theater. One is that the theater is where unhappy children end up. And the other, more recent one, uh, an article I read about um, Nicol Williamson, the actor, and that is that the theater is not where unhappy children go, but where the parent's favorite would end up, the most adored child, because they've been the center of attention as children. And the only place they can ever get that universal center of attention again is on the stage. And so they go into the theater for that reason. Is there anything to any of this? No. Oh. <laughs> No, usually the children that go on the stage are put there by uh, ambitious stage mothers who are really, what, tigers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they put their children on the stage. What was that lovely song? It was at Cole Porter, Don't Put Your Children on the Stage, you. Mrs. Mrs. Think, Worthington. Mrs. Worthington, yeah. yes. Right. Yes, and I was in, a, in a, an elevator one time coming down from... CBS. Oh, I mentioned another. Now you've done it. Uh -huh. I've said it. And uh, there was a little boy uh, with his mother, and his mother had the real face of a stage mother. Can't you recognize them a block off? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, there they are. There they were. And he said with a deep sigh, "I wish I wasn't in this business." Ah, oh. oh. so tragic. Oh. There's a family in California that they've had about, well, this is at the time of All Is In Heaven too, which is many, many years ago, and we had one of their children. They raised them for movies. Mm. They kept them at every age for movies. They just bred them for that purpose. They bred them for this purpose, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And little Reynald was about four years old, probably one of the brightest, dearest children I've ever known in my life. But they never let him go outdoors because he got all the sickly parts. Oh. He was having his life ruined. They kept him in the shade. Oh, he was uh, always pale and kind of sickly. <laughs> no, indoors even. Oh. That's awful. Now, but to there... answer your question, I've never been able to answer that question of why, yeah. why any of us in the beginning, because with all the nerves of theater, every time I'm in an opening night or 
even coming on here tonight, I still have my nerves to come on here. And my famous expression is, why didn't mother tell me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because it is a diabolical business. Of course, you don't understand what it's going to be when you start. And maybe it's just something you have to do. I think it's probably something you just have to do. Yes, it is. I think that's, it sounds silly, but it's something in you that has to express yourself in, 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 in another way than just growing up in suburbia and leading an ordinary life. Something about you was a little different. Now, if you don't, if you see someone who doesn't have that, Betty, and you know that they are knocking themselves out and they're never going to get anywhere, a young actress, can you, can you take them aside and say, look, you, you don't have the stuff, kid? Well, it's a pretty hard thing to do. Because many, many young people, I think you will agree, in the beginning seem to have nothing at all. Yeah. And, and, and with work and lots of training, which is not done so much anymore, the training part, they, they, de they develop when they sometimes don't seem to have a natural talent at all. I think some of those people become better performers because they really have to work harder. And for instance, the, the, the person born with a natural voice, you know, where they say you're going into opera tomorrow, I, I, I think maybe gets spoiled very young. Yeah. Could you? Could because you it is basically work and learning, and there are no shortcuts, and I think all this you will agree with. But often you can't tell in the beginning if the person has it or not. I was certainly the least likely young woman to succeed. No, no, quite serious, yes, no, because no. of my New England background. Yeah. I was uh, uh, certainly no type of a, that you would think would be an actress. Before I started studying voice, you couldn't have heard me down to those people in the first row. Plus, you know, a real Yankee accent, you know, I'd say, park a park the car in Harvard Square. <laughs> you know, and the first time in dramatic class that I read this sentence, of course, they all burst out laughing, and I burst out crying with humiliation. So. It's a very risky thing to take upon yourself to play God with talent. Mm -hmm. That's good. Often, uh, when 40 years have gone by and it's a great friend and they're starving to death, I have had the courage to say, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 40 years. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess that's true. I mean, but of I course guess. you stopped me. It sounded differently than I meant it, the yeah. really, but. Well, that's a good rule. It, it, if they it, haven't eaten or gotten a job in 40 years, really, tell them that they're. No, no, I mean, <laughs> at 40 years old, of course, they'd only yeah. been working about 20. But this is particularly with a man, this is a tragedy. To oh, me, yes. this is a tragedy because they always think it will happen. This is one of the magic parts of the theater and one of its worst points because for instance, I gave myself five years. If nobody had seen I had anything in five years, I would have changed my profession. There's always that hope that just tomorrow might be the... Well, this, is, this, this doesn't eventually happen after a while. But you see, one of the things that is very important, I have heard Betty says it now, and well, many of the others have said it, about <laughs> hard work. Well, of course, anything to do with theater, to me, is not hard work at all. It is a very exciting experience, anything that you do mm -hmm. with it. But then there is a thing that Moss Hart once said, and it is so true. Luck. A lot. Lots of luck. You bet. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's having the right part come at the right time. Walking around the corner and walking into a, a man who was a producer and said, just the person I've been yeah. looking at. That's the sort of thing. That's the fairy tale part of it. That's right. Yeah, and the fact that there are a few of and those is what, what keeps... And that's what keeps so many people going, you yes. see, so long, because yes. right. they may but, turn that corner. That's right, or sit but, at the right fountain. But uh, they may have the, the ability and the gift, mm -hmm. but the luck may not come. You really believe that's true? Yes, I do. Do you believe You really an believe an there are some people who never sort of made it, mm. that it was... It, they had great talent, but no luck. You think yes, that's it, possible? Yes, it is possible. Except that uh, if you make the better mousetrap, it's, it's yes. a possibility there, too. Yes. But um, there are, 
you always find, I, I will admit to you, that you find when the person has the gift, somehow that something happens. But somewhere along the line, you've got oh, to have the luck. Oh, have to, have to. Yes, I agree. Thank <laughs> you.